Well, 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 viewers, we haven't even arrived at the uh, Pride of Lombridge site yet, and uh, here we are in the car park at the hotel, and we have some delights already. 2004 to 5 MGTF Spark, which is a late special edition for these. Leather interior and things like that, which is nice. I can't remember what engine these came with. Maybe somebody could tell me in the comments section. Oh, viewers, the first of many, many beige leather interiors. French registered R17 Rover 800 Coupe. Mmm, I do like a nice beige leather interior. That's very unusual, isn't it? Rovers weren't that popular in France back in the day, but obviously they did sell some of them. MGZT 190, I actually driven one of these years and years ago, which was the ZTT rather than the saloon. Like the colour, that's uh, that's very nice. Ooh, there's a little wood dash in it, that one. Yeah, pre facelift one. Not entirely sure of the year because that's a personal plate on that one. So, this car apparently has been wrapped. I spoke to the owner actually last night. Um, he's sort of done some sort of yellow bits to it. It's a TF, but I don't know exactly the year of it. We've got a couple of ZSs here which have come from the Republic of Ireland. And, uh, and a 75, which we can't talk about viewers, because uh, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. We do, however, talk about MGZ T180, which is the, I think, the automatic version this was. Yes, it is. This is the facelift one. It's a lovely colour as well, that one. It's a very nice colour. Morning. And then we have Mr. Dan Cho and his maestro. Morning, sir. Morning. Morning. That is, that is rather nice. Henley blue, I think I can remember the colour of. Another MGZ T190. It's obviously only a very small selection of what is going to be coming. I've just spotted something rather interesting. We'll, we'll go over to this 75 first. One of the things I need to do when looking at any of these. It's just to check the rev count to see if we can talk about it. ZT and 75 Owners Club, hello. Um, I got accused on your forum last year of being a petrol snob. I'm not actually a petrol snob, I just can't talk about diesels on the channel. Because the Mayor of London and his friends all around the country, including the council in Birmingham, say that I can't. Uh, well, I'll just skip on, I don't know. I'm not sure, I'll have to... Uh, Come back to that later because I can't see the rev counter. Check the rev counter, it generally tells you if it's a forbidden fuel car or not. Ooh, German registered Rover 200 Cabrio. This is the latest, this is the, uh, no, this, actually, this isn't the um, later version because this has the, has the early dash in it, so it'll be around 95, something like that. It's 214 SI, so it's the base model if that kind of is actually uh, possible one of these that's weird 214 SI but it's an auto how is that possible I don't think they sold the um, 1.4k series of an auto I'm confused now viewers right I think we've got something else in this car park oh yes we have this is the other thing yes we're nice and safe the V6 Personal plate, Rover 75 Tora, probably be a 2.5, and a beige leather interior. Yes. Mmm. <laughs> Very excited. Anyway, I better get myself down to the Pride of Longbridge site, and uh, we shall continue once we're down there. So here we are at Cofton Park itself, and first of all, there is a uh, 
car, but I've actually driven on the channel. This is a 1973 Rover three and a half litre coupe P5B. It's owned by Signor Latore, who is uh, having problems with his choke cable today, apparently. We're uh, waiting on the uh, rest of the people who are on the HPR photo and post Abingdon weekend uh, stand. But uh, I might as well get on with some more filming whilst I'm here. So I'll leave the information sheet in the window. Uh, there's Roger. Roger will have to be on his own for a bit. What have we got here? We got some Zeb oh yeah, Zeb Register. Brilliant. Excellent. MGZR 105 Plus, it's a 2005, so it's a very late one. Registration 1st of March. 105 Plus, so just for 1.4. I've driven the 105 actually before, and they are still really good fun. The um, the engine's not the most powerful that you could get, but they're still good. Oh, look at this. Ooh. Oh, what's in this, actually? I've checked the rev counter, and it's petrol. But it's a very late one, 2004-5. It's a lovely colour, isn't it? I don't, I don't think I know that colour. I mean, it's a monogram. MG6 Magnet. Wow. I think this is a TSE because it's got the uh, parking sensors on the front. I've actually driven one of these before. I drove it on uh, Sensible Second Hand Reviews back in January, so this is 2014. The Magnet was the saloon version of the MG6. This will have the 1.8 um, Cavacci engine in it. It says turbo on the back, yeah, so that's a Cavacci engine which was uh, based on the just based on the uh, um, K series, but sort of quite heavily modified. And here we go, 2004 to 5. MGZR, oh, this is a 120. This is another car they've actually driven on the channel, I believe. And this was a lot of fun as well. And here is Veronica, MGZS 180 facelift. Morning. Morning. Looking very, very nice as usual. You could get um, either a sort of big or a small spoiler for the ZS 180, which actually has both on it. V6, excellent. Ooh, very nice colour. I like this colour. I like this green colour. That's very nice. Again, so many of these cars have got personal plates on them, so I don't really know exactly what uh, exactly what year they are, but I know it's a V6. Oh, there we go, 2004 GZT2160, uh, so this is a very late pre-facelift one. Another one in this kind of purple colour. This, yeah, this is, this, this is the ZT180, this is the automatic version of the ZT with the uh, KV6 engine. Excuse me, viewers, I've had a bit of a cold recently. I can't see that. Oh, yeah, it's a bit dark. So I don't know what engine's in that one. Again, probably MG Rover uh, press car or something, judging by that plate. ZT190. Post facelift one, early post facelift. Post facelift came in, I think, was it February 2004, I think, the facelift came in. Yeah. Shouldn't have even filmed that view, so we've got a problem there. The problem here with this uh, ZR160, it's a VVC engine. Huh? Very quick, these little ones. 2004, but a pre facelift. 
place of came I think around April 2004 for those. Be careful. It's really annoying the angle of the summit I can't I can't see. I've seen that one somewhere before I think. Summit garage in Dudley of course. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't see. Maybe later on in the day I'll be able to see the rev counters a bit, a bit easier. I mean, I'll be able to actually not sort of shuffle around and make too many more mistakes, which is, of course, what happens all the time with shambolic shuffles anyway. That's one of the reasons why they're called that. Are you a live vehicle? That's me. Yeah. Everyone's um, very, very much kind of making sure their cars look the best. Obviously, but it's a bit muddy today. It's it's dry, but it is a bit muddy because it has been raining here. That's very nice. Yes, it's 2004, like preface lift. Maybe like a Z120 or something if it's about the interior. Another ZR160, excellent. So it's a very late ZS. One point eight turbo, obviously there's a modification done to it, but never was a one point eight turbo ZS, only on the on the ZT, but you can fit a one point eight turbo engine to them. So an earlier ZR here, 2002 to 3. Excellent. Right, let's uh, let's get down to that side and have a look at some Tomcats and Montegos. That Montego won't have to skip out, but this Countryman. Very nice. Very, very nice indeed. These were very well regarded back in the day, actually. So this will probably have the uh, 2 litre row series in it. I have driven the Montego Countryman with a 2 litre row series. It was great. This will probably just be a 94, because I think 94 was the last year that they actually made um, the Montego estate. That's very smart indeed. Those are, I think, the original wheel trims as well. I'll have a look at this figure of the upholstery that you got with these, and you've got bits of wood and things like that. So, yeah, they have, this has the later dash in it with the um, rotary knobs for the heating and ventilation. By contrast, here's a, an earlier Montego, an empty turbo. Wow. Excellent. 86, 87. These are, as you can imagine, incredibly rare cars now. Any Montego's rare, but those are particularly rare. Now that looks very much like I'm in the right place. The Rover 800 Owners Club. Mm. Morning. That looks very nice. So T be a 99. Test. So yeah, 99 was for last year for these. You do see them on the, on V plates, but it tends to be um, you know the T's were sort of about the last time that they had made them. Very very nice. It's be a 2.7 V6 of this one. A two seven SI on L, so ninety three, ninety four, original pre nineteen ninety five area code on that dealer sticker there. 
the two Rover 20 turbos for Fastback and the uh, saloon. Very desirable now, the 20 turbo. Both of them 91, 92 on a J. That could have been actually a Austin Rover press or fleet car with that plate given by the area. We seem to be deciding where they're going to park. Somebody has got themselves sort of pretty stuck there with that ZT. We'll go over, yes, we'll go over here, I think. We'll go we'll have a Tomcat. Tomcat bits here. I like that Vitesse view. Got another Vitesse to see quite soon as well, because there's one on the stand that I'm on, which just arrived and we'll be filming tomorrow on Sensible Second Hand Classics. So have a look at some Tomcat. So first, look at this. 93, 94. This has all been stripped out. It probably doesn't even have a badge on the back of it anymore. No, no idea which one that is. Look at that rear wiper action and everything else as well. And a beige leather interior, I think, as well. So, by this stage, these cars were known as the Rover 1.6 or 1.8 Coupe. I don't know which one this is actually. Um, there are two models, the 1.6 K series, 110 horsepower, and the 1.8 VVC K series, 143 horsepower. That could be either. I'm not too familiar with them, so I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly. 93, 94. This one with the early dash. And rear wiper action. I don't know, that's uh, 97, 98. Uh, I honestly don't know. These do look fantastic, don't they, viewers? Got an early one here. Yeah, that's quite an early one. Even an early one there. I can't remember what the name of this colour is, to be honest, viewers. I forget, 9394. This is on a K, so it'd be, uh, it'd be a, I think it'd be about 92, 93. Beige leather interior. I do like a nice beige leather interior, it's, I very much do. That is, um, that's rather nice. And appropriately, the um, car they used to carry the stuff in is a Rover 420 GSI, which weren't sold for very long actually. Mr. Richardson's one from Fruist Driving, which uh, needs a bit of paint or some sort, it's similar to this. And of course, I drove that on the channel um, towards the end of last year. This will be similar, yeah, sort of about, about 1995. We've got some very, very nice 600s. We own 600 myself. I can tell you that they are excellent little cars. You can actually find one, they're not, they're not common anymore. This one's an auto, so it'll have the 2 litre Honda F series in it. Ninety-six, ninety-seven. This one's a very late one, actually. On a V, I think it's the last year I've actually made would be a V, so it'd be a 99. Ooh, and also more base leather interior action. That certainly appeals to me, viewers. Yes. Appeals to me very, very much. I think it looks like Nightfire Red. Very nice. Over 200 and 400 owners club stand. Plenty of tasty treats on here. That looks very much like a 216 GSI. Ooh. And a beige leather interior with wood. Very nice. And SLI. Has someone put, put, fitted a GSI interior to that then? Well, here was a 416 GSI. 
no better frontier this time. We do have the uh, very nice alloy wheels. This is an auto. It looks similar to a 416 GTI. But of course had the uh, so different engine like the twin cam engine in it. Both of those are really early, they're both on G plates, so 89.90 on M, so 94.95. This looks very much like a 214 SCI, but I might be wrong. As I frequently am, as we've found out so far. Yes, it is a 214 SCI, which is a special edition which has lasted a long time. But these are very sought after now, actually. Um, they seem to be very popular. This is a very late 25, isn't it? This is sort of right, right at the end. Ooh. I can't talk about that either, viewers. We have to move on. We can't talk about that one either. can, however, talk about this. It's a uh, Rover 200 Cabrio. It's a, uh, it's a late one. If it's a, it's a 1.8 VVC, it will be quite a late one. So uh, the, uh, by that personal plate, in fact, it's roughly the same year, this will be sort of 97, 98. Now these were made until about 99, so that's not entirely kind of... Um, Stretch of imagination. I have driven one of these. I drove one that belonged to Mr. Richard for furious driving, actually. It's the one I drove. And here's a Mark II facelift 45. So that would be the 1.8 um, K series with the uh, CVT transmission. I have owned a facelifted 45 myself. It was a 1.4 Club SE from 2004. This is uh, again possible MG Rover press plate, 2004 to five. 2001 Rover 45 1.8 RXS CVT. Relatively right early for. Uh, 45, they came out right at the beginning of 2000. This is the hatch, which has different trim levels on it from the uh, saloon. Three door, now, the, now these are rare. Three door 200 R rates are very rare actually. I don't know what specification this is. Again, it's sort of a uh, 93, 94, whereabouts. Right at the end of uh, SD3 Rover 200 production, they had a couple of specialists. One was a Sprint, and one was the 213SX. This is a 213SX, which you would have seen at the brochure at the same time as the R8 models. These are really, really rare. So this will be um, 89.90. Amazing condition. You just, you just don't see these, do you? Don't see these at all. And then, oh, viewers, a 216 Vitesse EFI in left-hand drive. Wow. This is very special, isn't it? This will be an 89. I think only an 89 this would be. Had the uh, 1.6 S series with electronic fuel injection. That is uh, in amazing condition. Number 45 here. Very distinctive sound of the, um, <laughs> the door opening and closing on them, of course. Another 200 Cabrio. This is an earlier one. It's not got the, the actual big grill, so it will be an early one. Uh, that one's the uh, Impression 2. The Impression was a very popular special edition number 45. So it um, went right the way through to uh, the Impression 3. Ooh, wow, it's actually got manual windows at the back. This would be a 216 actually because it's the automatic transmission. On the engine version. Very nice, thank you. And it's street wise that we can't discuss. Early 25, they came out on a V registration. A 
Well, this one we can. I don't know what engine does. Some, some kind of case series. Uh, be year 2000 on W. Again, I don't know. This is this is a late preface lift. 2004. Another street wise, just to make sure we can uh, sure we can actually talk about this, viewers. Ooh, we can. I've actually been offered a street wise to film. Uh, they offered them in both three and five doors. They they were quite pioneering cars. When you think about it, it was very. Sort of cynically received by the press when they came out in 2003, but these days they, they look like they are sort of ahead of their time, really. I do like this, viewers. I like this Mark II 45 very much. This would be probably a 1.8 connoisseur, I would have thought, judging by all the sort of bits and the chrome mirror caps. Um, but yeah, manual. Got the uh, headline washers and things like that. 2004, very, very nice. Very, very nice indeed. This is other base ever interior though. No, it's not actually. Um, ZS here. Trophy yellow, I think this is. ZS 180, yes. They made them in both saloon and hatch. So 2001 to 2. And here is a Rover 216 GTI. Nineteen ninety two ninety three registration. A preface left. This one is a, an early one, G sort of eighty nine ninety. The lattice alloy wheels. Two one six GSI, very nice. Three four hundred Tora. Interesting gear lever. Right, I think that's enough for part one of a slightly shambolic shuffle around V twenty twenty three Prada Longbridge. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like this video and leave a comment below. And we shall see you again soon for more incorrect information.